So it has happened. Unreal Engine 5 has been released into early access. And just in case you're not aware, you can get that now, either through the Epic Launcher or through the Git repository if you wanted to download and play around with the source build of the engine. So this is really just going to be a heads up on that topic in case you wanted to dive straight in and start playing around in the new version. I'll be going through a few pieces of information, everything that I discuss and a lot more I will be linking to the documentation and a few different pages of information down in the description below. All of this comes with the disclaimer as you'll see in the kind of official documentation and stuff anyway that this is an early access build it isn't really going to be ready for production stage projects and if you did want a project to play around in the demonstration covering the lumen and nanite samples is available to download in its entirety as well and you can pull that apart again links for that will be in the description below so the first thing i wanted to point you to is going to be the documentation on the new features and also quite importantly the features which are going to be either removed depreciated or have already been removed so some of these are things that i kind of touched on in the past when people have asked and the two main ones which stick out to me of course again there will be a lot more in the documents to read through if you wanted to go through the full list but i think the three main ones which are going to affect a kind of wide variety of people are going to be first of all the focus and inclusion of more chaos physics chaos cars and, th and things like that will be replacing the physics system then the matinee is being replaced with sequencer which i think a lot of people have kind of expected and seen happening over the years and i think that's going to be one of the biggest impacts and kind of most ongoing transition and i've even seen examples of recent projects where i've had to recommend people kind of move away a little bit from matinee because it seemed as though that was going to be getting left behind and then finally is the cascade update to niagara and i think this might be one of the quicker transitions as we've only really had niagara working officially in the builds i think for around about two or maybe three versions so it's been confirmed that those three are kind of on their way out and being replaced with the three that i've mentioned so we'll be looking at chaos physics sequencer and the niagara particle system like i've mentioned there's a bunch of new stuff new audio systems some other systems going out some being replaced different naming conventions to get used to and much more so go and have a look at that and now the engine has been released i can take a quick look back over some of my predictions when i created the video a few months ago looking at what we knew about the upcoming unreal engine 5 release and some of the speculations about what i thought we might be in for some of those i kind of forgot to mention as i said i have been considering things like cascade would be on the way out and matinee hadn't really been covered for quite some time i didn't really cover those some of the things that did come true though we've got a brand new ui and i'm going to go into that a little bit later and after playing around with four or five different projects now some in 4.25 some in 4.26 and some kind of smaller to larger projects what i have found is this definitely does feel like a big engine version update rather than the leap that we saw between unreal engine 3 and unreal engine 4 all of the projects have updated flawlessly there's been absolutely no problem so any of you working in unreal 4 at the moment and you may be worried about the kind of update process from what i've seen at this stage from projects as big as the plugin that i have for the marketplace the endless runner and some 2d projects some c projects uh, like i said a whole kind of range of different things going here even the paper flip books and things are working in unreal engine 5 so that is still there and like i've mentioned it really does feel like a big upgrade rather than a entirely new engine which i think is going to be a good thing and then a few of the other things have been confirmed as well like some of the older lighting systems are being removed in place for the newer lighting systems that are going to be included of course i kind of missed the mark with the release date but i was only going by the absolute official announcement that we had heard from epic so i didn't think that would be changing so overall i would say they were not a bad few takes now what i wanted to get into you could see the demo going on in the background there uh, again that's from the project you can download in the uh, the link i'll provide below uh, one thing i wanted to show is in the new ui when i was getting at that in the previous video i had some comments which are fine uh, you can leave whatever comments you want but just saying things like ui does it matter just get in and develop now that's all fine but when you're working in one environment pretty much all of the time what i found is that i wasn't working in the environment or in the editor i was kind of working around unreal engine 4 everything was very cumbersome you always had to move things it was pretty much it always felt as though it was in the way and this is where this new interface i think is amazing so far so we've got some nice simple shortcut keys so control in space you'll notice the first thing here is that we don't have 
all of the interface on screen. This is how it comes by default. We have a lot more real estate for the project that you're looking at, the world that you're building in. But the main things over here to the right hand side are going to look very familiar to most of you. And then that control in space shortcut I mentioned a moment ago, bring up the content browser that you could see was otherwise hidden below. Now, rather than just the actual interface looking better, all of the kind of gradients have gone, everything looks a little bit cleaner, smoother, and just much easier on the eye. But more than that, I was kind of getting at the usability. Things like this, where we have customizable interface systems now, where if you don't need anything from here, you wanted a bit more space on the screen, we can get rid of this. They've even considered, I think, the kind of legacy developers. So if you're very familiar with having this around, just one click and you can dock this back where it was previously. So everything kind of feels like it's one click away now, rather than being what I've kind of got familiar to, which is two or three clicks in the way before you can remove it. So all of this again, a lot of things have been moved or hidden or kind of put into different places like the source control button is down here to the bottom right hand side if you wanted your add actors panel which i think a lot of us will get very familiar with you might need it at the very beginning of a project bringing in the first kind of template things getting the light set up but after that you probably don't need it there all the time so what we can do now is go to window and we can actually enable up here the place actors and again it pops back up exactly where we wanted it now, I think coming from the background of Unity, I got very familiar with kind of scriptable and very editable interfaces where you could make everything do and look as you wanted. It was creating an environment that really kind of helped build your project. Uh, and again, this is what I was getting at. It isn't just whether or not this looks pretty, which I think it does look much, much better, but this is more to do with the fact that it already feels as though we can now work with Unreal rather than against it, which is going to be really good. A few more things are things like uh, build or test process is now in a single drop down just here so if you've got any, all of this installed we can go straight to the build and deployment options here rather than going through a few subsystems but overall everything just feels and looks a lot more kind of up to date and as though we can hopefully when this starts getting fully implemented with potential future updates it's going to be nice to start using some of the custom user widgets as well and it's really going to start I think seeing a lot more developers really considering how we can make in project tools to really work with the project and improve the workflow and speed things up in that way. So besides that, you can see here that we can open things like the meshes, the mesh viewer, all of the standard interfaces are very familiar. Again, we can go into the blueprints. The blueprint layout looks pretty much exactly as it did previously. And a lot of the things that most Unreal 4 developers are going to be familiar with, the project settings, the layout, the requirements for game modes, and how we set all of that up again, all very much in exactly the same place. So this was just a very quick tour, a few things I'd noticed already, some updates on kind of the experiences I've had updating from UE4 to UE5 have been absolutely seamless so far. Uh, some things I think are quite interesting and hopefully you want to look into as well. And a lot of other things you can look into depending on the points of this version update that you are most interested in. And mainly just to get the video out there and let as many people know as quickly as possible. If somehow you hadn't seen the update somewhere else or the news somewhere else, you can now go ahead and download and install the early access version of Unreal Engine 5 right now. And in fact, I guess that's one more thing to cover. If you haven't seen it or if you haven't restarted your launcher today, then part of the reason you may not be seeing it is that uh, this needs to be refreshed. You'll see we have a new Unreal Engine 5 tab here. We can download this from early access or get the source code, as I mentioned. Alternatively, you can come to the engine version. You can simply press the plus button just here. If I hadn't already got this installed, then I would get a new version and you can choose from the drop down. So as you're always going to be familiar with this kind of drop down here, and you can choose Unreal version 5.0 early access from the list. Everything else is pretty much the same. Again, if you're familiar with Unreal Engine 4, this is just going to be a very standard workflow for you by now. You've got all of the same options and everything that you've seen in the past. And if you were to launch this, you'd get the same details that you normally get to create a new project and a few extras. So I'll be doing an update video to this a little bit later. Uh, I'll be going through setting up your first kind of project and getting a quick kind of tutorial together to get a brand new project going. Uh, maybe a small game or something in Unreal Engine 5. I think I'll try and aim that at the people potentially not coming from Unreal Engine 4. So I'm thinking of something to target completely fresh developers. Maybe you've been holding out for the Unreal Engine 5 release and now it's here, you want to know how to get your first bit of code and your first game going in the brand new engine. So do look out for that over the next couple of days. As ever though, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. 
I hope you have a lot of fun with the newly released engine version. I know that I'm looking forward to spending the, the next few days uncovering what this has to offer and looking into some of the brand new features in the engine. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.